fucking tired. Okay, we're good. Okay, does anyone need a drink or anything? <laughs> Every so often it's gonna be no, damn it! Do you want to get the singing enemy system now? No. The energy wall. That did not have the impact. I knew that was going to happen. I was just joking. Getting snapped. Hi everybody. I'm in my mind. I'm gonna get right to the point. Everybody and welcome to episode 39 of Nights at the Round Table. Today we are discussing the book A Spell for Chameleon by Claire's Anthony. This is the first book in the Zant series um, and it's basically about a young man named Bink who goes on a quest to discover what his hidden magical talent is um, only to find he can't manifest it and gets exiled anyway. Um, and then shenanigans. That's the best way I can put this. <laughs> So we'll start with general impressions of the book. Who wants to go first? After you. Uh, all right. Um, I, I, for the most part, I liked a lot of the um, uh, the wit and the humor and the and the, um, the, the, the plain words that Pierce Anthony had going with this with this book. Um, it made it an interesting read. There are more than a few points where I'd be just kind of smirk as I'm reading because of it. Um, I have a couple issues with it, but uh, we'll get into that. Um, but o overall, I mean, it, was, it, was a decent, uh, it was a decent book. It's the first book in the series, so, you know. Um, I had bought this at a book sale five years ago, and I sort of half expected it to be on the same level of humor as um, the Discworld series and was really surprised. So it, to me it felt really tame. Every once in a while I'd be like, eh, nickel beat. <laughs> but that was about it. I, I w wasn't laugh out loud funny, which was kind of what I was hoping for. Um, it was also kind of predictable at times. It was a good read, but it's not going to be on my yearly reread list. Yeah. Um, for me as well, I read the Zat series when I was a young teenager, and I loved them. I thought they were funny and the adventure was fun. Um, I still quite like them. They're not nearly as funny as I remembered them. The The biggest laugh I got was the sowing the wild oats. <laughs> yeah. That was, that made me laugh out loud. Um, but uh, it's still a fun, light read. I, what I really like about this book is it's not nearly as cynical as a lot of fantasy is nowadays. So reading it, it's fun and uplifting and if you've had a rough day, it's a great book to go to. It's done. It's light, it's not all drudge and dreary. This no, is the world we created and we're going to die in a tight fantasy. Yeah, it's, n it's not George R. R. Martin. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, has its pros and cons. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't spectacular. I wasn't blown away by this book, but then I wasn't expecting to be either. So, it did its job. It was adequate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure the author would love to hear that. <laughs> Well, I, whatever, I bought it. I'm, yeah. I'm going to restock my Zen theories, because they are fun. <laughs> they are. Um, I like the different trees and animals, and especially with the theory that they all originally came from the mind of humans. So the bread tree wouldn't have existed if humans hadn't come in with bread. Mm -hmm. So there's probably some guy who threw a toast out the window and, and it then it, grew it sprouted. It, the tree, <laughs> uh, or the shoe tree, or the gene fields. Yeah, yeah, the, the um, gene fields. Yeah, and also the the weird combination of animals and the invisible super giant. Yeah. And poor guy got burnt alive. As silly as they were, the Wiggles are terrifying. They are, aren't they? I, I mean, well, the ones in the book, not the real ones. Those are terrifying too. Because uh, every time I read the Wiggles, I kept thinking of the Australian Children's Entertainment Group. And the image in my head was hilarious of these two miniature Wiggles shooting through the air. Singing the whole Singing. way. Wake up, Jeff! No. Uh, not the same. <laughs> what did you think about that? Um, theory that Xanth being isolated is what caused them to merge more and more into a magical being and that it was only the influx of more humans that would keep them, I guess, pure, yeah. which kind of fresh. There's a lot of themes in this book that bugged me. The, yeah, the human like purity aspect and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I was 
so sick of hearing about how even. pretty people were. Yeah. Oh, she was kind of pretty, but I mean, okay, fine. Give it a scale for fuck's sakes. <laughs> she was a five. Oh, the next day she was a five point two. Just yeah, get over it. Yeah. There's so much that was a mention Wait. of romance and love and beauty and sex, yet there was no romance. You know, little R, real romance. It was all just like, hey, we're together, let's boink. Pretty much. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and also, um, it, it, that is true, that did bug me, was the emphasis on appearance. And so much. Like, and it bink. wasn't just the women, the men too. Yeah. Yeah. But but seriously though, Bink, get over yourself. <laughs> well, how could he? Every single woman there wanted to do him. Apparently. Even yeah. the old woman who had just talked to the ghost of her husband was like, hey, I'm single now. <laughs> you can stay for the night. A wink. <laughs> Right? No, you know, like, like obviously he, he was lucky, but he was really lucky. <laughs> well, you know, his talent was just looking out for him. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, it's good for a person if they have a long and like very gene pool out there. Mm. <laughs> right. So, if they sow their wild oats and not the same sense. Yes. Although they weren't particularly wild, they were mostly sort of like, "Hey," and he was like, ah. He seemed more afraid of women than anything else. Really? Yeah, I got that. Up on no. Mm -hmm. No, preoccupied with their appearance as, yeah. and as to whether or not they would suit him in particular. Just that—that that did bug me. But again, it's not a book that I take terribly seriously, so it wasn't that bad, I suppose. It was mostly obnoxious. It wasn't a, oh, this is a terrible message. It was just to say, oh, come on, get to the interesting parts. Yeah. Um, I do have to say, um, as a Celtic studies person, mention of and proper use of the word geish made me so happy. So happy. Uh, it's spelled geish, G-E-I-S. Oh. It's basically a magical taboo. That I've never heard reach. that pronounced. Yeah. I've only read it. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah. most people say Gaius. Gaius? Gaius, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Geish. If I, I trust I, if you. If I remember from my Celtic studies classes correctly, I might be wrong, correct me in the comments. Um, nicely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or just Celtic studies. The <laughs> <laughs> Celtic study trolls. <laughs> uh, yeah. I am one, so. <laughs> Oh, you go around that's telling people, calling them a big fat head because no, they said gayest for up no. that, That's not how you spell that, or that's not what that word means. There, there, that's there. not what happened. I corrected someone's Klingon the other day online, so <laughs> I have nothing to say. You win. <laughs> Kapla. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, the reading was fairly smooth, but I do have to say, holy explana- explana- oh my lord, exclamation points, Batman. <laughs> they were everywhere! Yes. And in some of the weirdest places too. Um, um, like, for example, there was a sentence that ended with the phrase, if he did not react to her face and body. Which is fine, except the way it was written was, if he did not react to her face and body, why was that exclamation point there? There was no reason for it. I know, right? There were a lot of instances like that, and I was... I don't recall that ever being a problem, but reading it now, I'm like, this is weird. Did, yeah. did he have an editor for the first <laughs> I Yes, I expect so. It was, it's Probably. published by Del Rey, so yeah. they're pretty good. Maybe it's about, maybe for the time, because it was published in the 70s. 77, oh, yeah. Did it ever feel 70s? Did it? Was it a 70s? Chipper, everything happening <laughs> is good fantasy. There's two really. There's the the really dark and dreary um, science fiction fantasy, and then there's these light, yeah. fluffy fantasies. Everything is special. <laughs> yeah. Everything is awesome. Yeah. Everything is cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you're part of the team. <laughs> Okay, thank you for finishing yeah. up for me. I lost the words. <laughs> I can't right. remember. Everything is awesome. Everything is words, 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 words. <laughs> <laughs> the author's <laughs> motto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is now. <laughs> um, yes. 
What was my last point? Exclamation points. There were many. Exclamation point. Yeah, <laughs> there were many! <laughs> uh, on the upside of this, I, I really did enjoy, and I know we, we talked about it a bit, but I really did enjoy about the um, alternate world that Pierce Anthony has created for this. I found it quite intriguing. Um, it was cleverly w written, and he used, um, uh, had some good word games and puns. Um, like, for example, the flora and fauna, such as the um, ambushes, which were shrubbery that are invisible until you least suspect to see them. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of the okay. series is yeah. like that. Further yeah. on in the series, you'll meet a spearman plant, which is literally a mint that throws javelins if you get too close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then there's the popcorn, which is literally a corn flower that, you know, explodes as a de defense. But what's interesting is there are things in there that the Zant people have no idea of, like the cherry bombs. Mm -hmm. They have no idea of what a bomb is, but they knew what a cherry bomb was. Which Because of the tree. Yeah. Because of the cherry bomb tree. Uh, always curious as to when in Mundania times they are. Because he mentioned guns, and he mentioned possibly nuclear weapons at one point. Yeah. So... I'm I guessing it could have been the, the 70s. 70s. And that, that was my guess, the yeah. 70s. It was just, you know, modern Monday. Although people reading it now could easily have said, hey, yeah, now. No. And the, it and wasn't the, so detailed that you can pick out the era. And Xanth was like basically a peninsula, which is on, in the um, in the front part there. But they're yeah. saying, talking about the size in North Village, which is apparently a, a big village, I um, think it said, well, it's only 4,000 people. I mean, you, you know you're talking about a place that has 300,000 people. That, you're, you're talking tall tales now. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, it's, you know. Um, did anyone else notice that the Zanth Peninsula looked an awful lot like Florida? Yes, he mentions <laughs> it at the beginning. Oh, does he? Yeah, he's, uh, hold on. The Was there a fourth? I didn't yeah. read that if there was. It wasn't my copy. Any resemblance to any mundane peninsula is strictly in the mind of the author who lives near the North Village. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. I didn't read that on the map. It was on the map. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's my copy as well. <laughs> um, I really do like the world. Xanth is amazingly well written, and I like the fact that the entrance is different depending on where you go in and when and all that. I like that Xanth um, touches all places in the world yeah. too. So you can access Xanth from any continent. You just mm -hmm. sort of stumble into it yeah. when you reach the pass point. And a lot of fantasy novels that are light have trouble keeping consistency with their magic. Like, oh, here's a rule. We'll break it in the next paragraph. Mm. But this didn't. It was very, like, he must have written everything down and followed his rules. But exactly. to be fair, there weren't many rules for magic. He has there a, weren't, but they were very, consistent. Yeah, they were consistently absent. <laughs> well, no, but his six feet and for changing someone. And oh, he could only yes. change something that was alive. And yeah, okay, yes. Um, but uh, there's a number of times in this book where magic happens and a normal person would be like, so then what happens to their clothes? And he addresses that, but he's yeah. like, there's no counting for magic. It's just magic. We're like, that's so cheap. That is so... It's a cop code. Yeah, a little bit, but it works for the It for works the for the book, it especially with the, the ending, with yeah. what, like, his ending job becomes. Yes, yeah. It's, it's, it's a cheap and easy fix, but it works. Well, a lot of it is. Like, his magic power is the cheap and easy fix. Because throughout the book, you're like, oh my god, this guy's lucky. Yeah. That's not realistic. Oh, come on. And then you hear about his power, and you're like, oh, okay. Um, it had been so long since I'd read this book that when I first started, it was vaguely familiar, but I couldn't really remember what's happened. And it was about a third of the way into the book, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. That's Bing's power. Got it. I actually guessed it at the, uh, the water fountain. At the water fountain? Well, when the water fountain, well, it had like a... Geesh. That prevented him from <laughs> going against the river's well-being. Yeah. And then he said, screw you to the river and nothing happened. I was like, oh, that's what it is. Mm. So the rest of the book, whenever something super convenient happened, I was like, ah. If I had ended up that he had like fire spreading out of his fingers, I would have been really shocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of shocking things, Sabrina, her complete 180 from, you know, being Bink's fiance to not giving a crap after he was exiled, was 
There were no clues, so that came as a bit of a what the. There were some clues with like their society valuing powerful magic, and but, her and him being put together because both their parents had powerful magic, and yeah. the whole reaction when they were at the Justin tree, and she's like, "But you don't have any magic." Whoops. Well, see, that's why it, I found it weird because she's like, "You don't have any magic," so to me, it it felt like she already knew. He yeah. didn't have any magic, it, but they were me, affianced anyway. It felt like she knew she, he was going to be um, exiled, so and she didn't want to go through the so pain of the breaking ones. up with him. No. She was with him for long enough, and then realized, well, I might as well just wait till he's exiled. She seemed oh, very vapid, but completely. The, the other yeah. thing on, on her as well is when they when he had the trial, mm -hmm. um, and. A uh, good magician at Humphrey had already signed a document saying, hey, he, had, he, he has magic. It won't manifest. But, but it just but... won't manifest. And he signed. He's one of the powerful magicians in Xanth. His, his, whether the king is sane or not, his, his word carries weight. And so, therefore, she should, should have been like, okay, oh, great, okay, awesome. He has magic. He has a lot of magic. That's, that's fantastic. He can stay. Yeah. And then when he gets exiled, she just stayed there and kept her head down. Yeah. A way to be loyal. You're not going to stick up and say, "Hey, you know, like he has." You're not. You're not going to, you know, try and help him out a little. From the description of like her honestly, at the beginning, the minute he started his quest, I was like, "Oh, he's going to meet the plucky sidekick girl who he's going to end up falling in love with." Wow. Well, and then he met the super gorgeous girl, and then the average girl, and then the same person. I was like, "Oh man." The, I have to say, the ugly but incredibly intelligent version of. of was the most interesting? Oh yeah. Yeah. She was a great character. I loved her. Unfortunately, she was like five pages or two paragraphs, uh, two uh, chapters. Well, that's more, so that's more than most interesting girls get. <laughs> True, but he should have met her earlier, and she should have traveled with him instead. But that's what was her name? Falchion. Yep. Yeah. Um, like that. Falchion. Yeah. Falchion. Falchion. F A N C H O N. Fanchion. I kept thinking Falchion because she had a razor wit. Yeah, yeah. I you, kept th thinking the weapon too every time I saw it. The new D, who was the average in uh, wine. Win. 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 Was the yeah. very pretty but Winnie, su super whatever. stupid one. Yeah. I, I I resent that, by the way. It is entirely po possible for beautiful women to be intelligent. <laughs> oh, of course. Yes. But none of them are in this book. No. All the pretty ones are not... All the powerful or intelligent women are average or, or ugly, ugly. Yeah. and all the really beautiful ones are kind of dumb. Yeah. yeah. Like, you keep saying how Sabrina's intelligent, but she's not really... Well, you never really get to yeah. see it. She never gets Her it. actions don't seem to be. No. So, on, on, on the, on the end, of, end of the women, I, I like how... And there's a lot I like about the movie, but there's one really big point that I really don't like the movie. The book. It would make an interesting movie. Uh, a few rewrites? That would be really cool. Disinterestingly. Ah. Um, <laughs> anyhow. Um, be a lot of CG. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that all the movies right now? Yeah. Uh, fair enough. You could also so just put in a room with CG or anything. The next. Um, they managed decent centaurs for Narnia. They're good yeah, for this. Yeah, fair. Although we haven't had a very good Jim Henson movie lately, so this could work. Jim, Jim Henson's no longer with us, unfortunately. But his sons are, and his company <laughs> oh, still exists. that's true, that's true. Brian Froud's so, still drawing, so keep going. But uh, what I was going to say is, like, there's, uh, there's a scene where it explains how horrible it is for men to be convicted of rape, and how women make up accusations, then, and there's also two scenes where the main character, who is about on his 25th birthday, he's going to be exiled. So he's almost 25. Next month I'll be exiled. Blah blah blah. So he's you know 24. You know where the main character is sexually attracted to 14 year olds. 14 year olds? What? Uh, when the um. I missed that. Sorry, there were 14 year old girls in this? Uh, yes, when Iris, the uh, one, the super powerful magician with the illusions, changed into the uh, younger girl who was about 14. Oh, well, she was trying to find out what he was after. Yes, exactly. And that was. And, and he was attracted to that form. 
and the like. But anyhow, there's a couple scenes in the book there that was in, in one I of them. I totally missed that. The, rape, yeah. the mock rape trial really did bug me. Yeah. Seriously. Um, you know, and the, fa and the fact that the main character uh, couldn't seem to think or look at a woman without thinking about their, um, I'll say, sex ability factor. But he was non, like, uh, he didn't choose. He thought the same thing about Trent. The description of his own father was kind of disturbing. <laughs> Seriously, the description of his father was, he was a handsome man with a chiseled jaw and broad shoulders. And Look, was uh, like, wait, oh my stop, God. stop, stop. Okay, because I'm a girl, and girls do this all the time, we can... Um, look at other women yes. and say, oh, I appreciate that. No, uh, and men usually don't in the 70s. Oh, Write about it. It just, he really, that was one of the things that annoyed me. He described the beauty of every single person. I was half expecting him to start talking about the flowers. That was a really attractive iris. Oh, <laughs> bad choice. Like, the even, uh, uh, there are two harpies in this, and he describes them in depth about how they are kind of attractive, except for their saggy breasts. And come on. All right. Uh, anybody else have any points they want to make before we go into the star rating? You had a good one about it not quite being a kids' book. Yeah, there's a little bit too much questionable moral ethics around sex, like what you were talking about that I wouldn't really necessarily want. Wouldn't recommend it for a young kid. Mm. Granted, considering the stuff I read when I was 10 to 15, this is nothing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely different. That's it? No um, sorry, I have a question for you. You've read the rest. Is no, he the main seer character throughout the series? I believe the series follows Big. Okay. I'm pretty sure, and if, uh, spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure Bink and the Centaur Chester become good friends. That does not surprise me. Yeah. It, it was hinted at at the end of the book. So, Fair in that, I can see where the rest would be really interesting in the academic sense of looking for magic. What causes magic? And, yeah. yeah. This, I don't know who named this book, but they really should have chosen something better. A Smell for Chameleon is a great name, but has nothing to do with the story, except for that one plug. Yeah, yeah except for that one girl whose actual name is Chameleon. Yeah, no, I have to agree, because it wasn't the main thrust of the story, even though the, the romance that wasn't quite romantic um, was a major part of the story, it wasn't the main thrust of the story. And so looking for a spell to cure her wasn't, was an afterthought. Yeah, well, it was what she was doing, yeah. it's not what any other of the characters If it had been her point of view, then I would have agreed. Would that he has some nice um, alliteration in some of his titles. Like uh, the mm -hmm. one I remember most is Gollum in the Gears. What I'm guessing is six. What I'm guessing is six. someone told him he had to use a different name. Like he probably had a good alliteration. Usually that happens with the first book in a series. Uh, and they'll say, nope, yeah. choose something else. All right, if you were to give this a rating out of five. Um. Yeah, I, I think I think for me uh, it rates it about a three. There's areas that I have issues with, as I've noted, um, and there I, I think it could have done a bit better filling out some of the characters. But um, I, I think I'll, I think I'll, it's good enough that I'll pick up the second book in the series and, and see where that goes. Okay. But three for me. Uh, traditionally, I give a three if it's sort of a meh book. But I'll give it a 3.5, because it did. it's not every book that I, even if it's small, that I can read in three, four days. <laughs> so it was really interesting and kept my attention, and I'll probably pick up the next one. So 3.5. Um, three for me, uh, which is actually a good school. That's, that's the, it, it was good. It wasn't brilliant, um, but I liked it because it was fun. It wasn't nearly as cynical as most of the fantasy you read. Um, it wasn't brilliant. I've said that before. I <laughs> worth saying again. It's really not brilliant. Um, the puns <laughs> are funny, though. Uh, good for a chuckle. I uh, wasn't fond of several things in the book, uh, notably the the rape trial thing that happened, um, and the sort of yeah. defense that the author goes on about rapists that aren't charged with anything ever. Anyway. <clears throat> you will go over your head if you're maybe 13 and reading this, because I think I was 12 or 13 when I read the Zat series. 
and I didn't notice it before. Uh, the use of the word geesh in its proper form made me extremely happy. Um, yeah, so three. It's a good book, I recommend reading it. I will be picking up the rest of the series because, not well, mostly for nostalgia reasons, but <laughs> it's a good series. Alright, who wants to pick the next one? Go ahead. You pick the next one in that other show in the future. <laughs> the Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Oh, yay! I've heard this is really good. I haven't read it yet. It is so, very good. Wait, ah, sorry. I read that. Ah. Okay, thanks. Um, this is actually the last episode for 2014. We're all going on Christmas break because it's Christmas, you bastards. Give us a rest. Um, if you want to <laughs> join the conversation, you can... <laughs> And happy holidays! <laughs> you can leave a comment Please down below. Mark. You can leave a comment down below, um, or you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, you'll find us there as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I promise I love you. Merry Christmas, everyone! Happy New Year! She, she does accept gifts of scotch and beer. <laughs> oh, what? No, ew! Beer! And subscribers. No. Subscribers. I accept gifts of subscribe and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Five pounds of bacon at least. <laughs> you heard her Google, YouTube needs a button that's bacon. <laughs> Alright, bye! That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs>